Oh, to a 2v2 on Samoski Winter. This game is going to be Stalin's Onion and Willing 2 13 versus Babitsky and Beavis. We're going to see Double OKW versus Double Soviets again, which uh, Double Soviets prevailed last time I cast this matchup. Let's see if it happens twice. <laughs> Something tells me probably since Double OKW on Samoski Winter is like awful. But who knows, anything could happen. Stalin's Onion going in hard for the center here with Kubel Wagon open, opening. Welling 2 also won the Kubel Wagon opening, but it, it already died. It already died right there, if you can believe that. <laughs> well, well, the YouTube crowd, unfortunately, is just not going to know <laughs> the, the great mystery of how the opening Kubel Wagon for Welling 2 managed to get right there and die. But it happened. And uh, yeah, so he's off to a pretty rough start. Two folks, Grenadiers and Sturm Pios, already dead. Or already dead Kubel Wagon. And the engagement for the Soviets is already going pretty well here in the beginning. <laughs> Very well, in fact. We're gonna see hard maxim spam though by Vizky, which. Generally, it doesn't really work that well. Heavy machine gun team, for See if combat. he can make it work. This Kuba Wagon is struggling to deal with the sheer volume of buildings and green cover on this map, and a tier 2 is going up in a dangerously forward location for Samoski Winter, and there is an extremely good chance of heavy mortars, flamethrowers, anything, whatever. Soviet indirect fire, Katusha's. The list goes on. destroying this position. We do have Soviet Combined Arms Army for the ML-20. Even that is a threat to this position. Shock Rifle and Conscript Support both have incendiary artillery for that. Uh, shock Motor could go ISU against it, and the Bomb Run. <laughs> I feel like it's just it's impossible to list all of the various things that could destroy that battle group headquarters. The sheer quantity of viable Soviet options for dealing with that are is staggering. <laughs> All right, mods. I'm I'm instantiating a new rule, and this new rule applies only to Carilio. The rule is he cannot type more than two statements in direct sequence. If he goes three or higher, timeout. That's a new rule. It's in effect starting right now. Mods, get to work. <laughs> Carilio specific rule. See how long he lasts. <laughs> Stern Pioneers jumping into close range against the conscripts in this building. Should be able to win that engagement. Falling pretty low pretty quickly. This Maxim still available to support right here. Only one force to retreat thus far. The other two still on the front line. And now he's transitioning actually into conscripts. <laughs> apparently. And uh, field gun. Getting a field gun a little on the early side must feel quite confident in how the game is going so far. Beavis on the other hand going with four cons opening. Pretty standard. And floating from there. He hasn't gotten healing yet I don't think. He has gotten Molotovs though. Ooh his conscripts just got wiped in uh, building his house maybe. That's going to be a painful loss. You can easily afford to replace that loss though. It's not the end of the world by any means. Infantry support gun in progress here for Stalin's Onion. It's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough to pull off. Kuba Wagon just went down right there on the road to Maxim fire on its rear armor in that range. Shouldn't have stuck around for so long. Probably wasn't paying attention to it. Let it eat a little bit too much Maxim bullets. MG34 fielded apparently, right? Yeah. MG34 up here. That's Fortifications Doctrine chosen. I think Spec Ops Fortifications could be a pretty solid composition. Meanwhile, Beavis has gone Shock Rifle and thrown Shocks out. And, um, Babitsky still has not chosen yet.
<laughs> According to Wolfenstein, Carillo lasted two and a half minutes. <laughs> wow. Wow, Carillo. Are you even trying? Probably not. That was probably, he probably intentionally got himself down. Whatever. Everybody wins! Ooh. Infantry support gun. It's a nice hit on that Maxim right there. Insta pin, props the retreat, and Stern Pioneers finish it off. So that, apparently, pretty good value out of that infantry support gun so far. Still hasn't paid for itself. If you if you count the Maxim not being available to protect the field gun, and therefore the infantry support gun indirectly contributed to the field gun being wiped, then it has paid for itself. So it's all, it all, it's all context. It's all about how you calculate whether or not this was worth it or not. <laughs> we'll continue bombarding here on the ice to try and put pressure on these conscripts, but all it really manages to do is friendly fire. <laughs> Looks like that Maxim will remain in Soviet control as Beavis moves up with his conscripts to maintain these team weapons. Over Commando West player will have to pull back to safety a little bit. Grenade toss right there. That was probably a little bit naive. I don't think he's monitoring any other engagements right now. Grenade is off target. Stern Pioneers are going to start bleeding really badly if they ever take any damage here. We should probably try and find a way to get them healed before they continue engaging. Here in the north, a flag half-track has been fielded, and Beavis looks like he's going to be forced to retreat a little bit. The machine gun that was in that building got burned out by Molotovs, but flag half-track means that those conscripts are not going to be able to advance right now. It takes at least three squads of conscripts to kill a flag half-track coming from multiple angles. Four is honestly better, though, because you need three AT grenades or two AT grenades and a lot of small arms fire, so... And you need to come from multiple directions or you'll just get suppressed and killed. Black Half-Track is currently leaving the top, though. Actually, with Shock Troop supporting a smoke grenade, might help a little bit. But if the Flag Half-Track is obscured by smoke, you can't... You can't, um... You can't target it with AT grenades, so there's that to consider. Another Maxim looks like it's going to get cleared right here. Maybe. Stern Pioneers messed up their chase a little bit. So, maybe not. This is going to get away. Demo charge got planted right there. I think the Axis spotted that, though. I think I saw him shooting at that earlier. Hopefully they're not going to step over that demo charge. I'm pretty sure they saw it getting planted. Shock troops running straight in on these uh, Sturm Pioneers are getting gunned down hard. They were actually shooting at the Folks Grenadiers as they ran through that deep snow rather than the Sturm Pios. So I honestly think the Sturm Pios were going to win that if they stuck around just a little bit longer. Kind of a premature retreat right there, I think. The Folks Grenadiers, on the other hand, should have retreated all before eating that grenade, certainly they do get wiped. Shock troops take that engagement. Thanks in part to bad micro, and in part to bad judgment. They're gonna retreat for healing anyway. Flag half track has repositioned all the way back to the base? No, where is it? Where did it go? Is it dead? It died! I missed it dying, I don't know what happened. Where is the dead flag half? I'm extremely curious. <laughs> I have no idea what happened. Oh, it's dead right there. Yeah, I guess it got swarmed by AT grenades. That's that's my guess. I don't know. Grenadiers walk right into a shock squad up here in the north. I don't think they're being monitored and they're gonna get wiped, I think. Oh, there they go in red cover. S mine field goes down up here on these two points from the Folks Grenadiers. That's gonna make it kind of difficult though for uh, these infantry to take control. Shock troops are gonna skirt the minefield, just taking control here in the south. Conscripts look like they might get pinned down by the machine gun though. Maybe. Two squads moving up on. Uh, on the cutoff right there. There's a tier 4 up as well. By the building. Don's Onion doesn't currently have the fuel to field anything. 
particularly serious, and Wellington is still three CPs away from his pack 43. Both Soviet players have gone shock rifle and fielded some corner of shock troops. There are currently five squads of shock troops on the field, so the flag half track would have been great. A great counter to that if it hadn't died, however, it managed to die earlier. I don't know, I still don't. I wish I had seen that engagement happening. Conscripts retreat right there. Shock troops going in hard on an infantry support gun that they catch way out of position. The entire OKW blob will move to try and... Oh, oh my god, that MLG grenade. That MLG grenade. Shock troops have dropped one model, two models, getting focus fire down. They will be forced to retreat. Three models. Now they're going to get wiped. I think he waited a little too long on that one. Really wanted to finish off that Folks Grenadier squad. Fortunately, it just didn't happen. More conscripts moving up into this engagement to apply additional pressure with Molotovs, but they will get suppressed and killed by Folks Grenadier grenade right there. Counter grenade. So many shock troops. Demo charge just annihilated more infantry blobs. Shock troops moving up on the flank will destroy one machine gun. Two machine guns, I think. More coming in from the front. There's just so many shocks and so many. The overcommand of West looked like they were doing an okay job of holding their line. But eventually the house of cards just collapsed. Conscripts get wiped though. A lot of conscript squads have been getting wiped, to be fair. Beavis has only shock troops left except for one conscript squad. His teammate up to three shocks with a stolen Panzer Shrek, one conscript remaining, and a couple machine guns, so. Shock troops are are annihilating a lot of priority targets, but conscripts are uh, are paying the price in blood. Another wipe right there by those shock troops. Shock troops cannot advance into the uh, arc fire of that tier 4 structure, so it does create some uh, zone of protection. That shock troop squad got taken out by Stern Pioneers here on the battle group headquarters. A little bit more damage than the Soviets were expecting there, I think. Maxim's about to get cleared. This shock troop squad can't win this. Needs to get out of there. Wow, these wipes! That Stern Pioneer squad is a hero. 25 kills, including a ton of shocks. Maybe this game is possible. I don't know. It's been pretty ridiculously lethal on both sides so far. Doesn't look too good for the Overcommando West because even though the infantry wipes have been super lethal on both sides, the Soviets have had better map control and access, of course, to their call-in tanks, and Wellington still hasn't built a Pac-43, and without a Pac-43, they have no hard protection against what's coming. KV-8 for starters from Beavis, and Bobisky looks like he will simply... Oh, he's not even up to ten, 9 CPs yet. I don't know if he's going to field one or not. No Command Panther for an eternity. No regular Panther either, making Tier 4 look like it might have been a mistake this game. STG Oversoldan will finally be the superior close combat infantry squad against shock troops. Giving the Overcommando West some real hard firepower. Especially when they can reinforce mid-combat. Shock troops just diving in, getting laser beam down. Oh, what is that Stuka doing right there? 
Does he try to kill stuff with a hull MG? He takes a Panzer Shrek shot, two Panzer Shrek shots from shock troops. Fortunately, Stuka has a big H health pool. Somehow manages to survive that and has to pull back to safety. That was probably a bad rally point right there, but it almost cost him dearly. Of course, if these shock troops didn't all have Panzer Shreks, <laughs> maybe this engagement wouldn't have been so tough. It looks like everything's gonna be forced to retreat thanks to the efforts of Obersoldaten base guns. Another. Over Commando goodies, but the KV-8 has just enough space created to destroy the battle group headquarters, and that's going to be just another priority target knocked out, and the Over Commando West probably could not afford to lose. <laughs> Stuka takes out the KV-8, though. I wasn't expecting that. KV-8 pushes away a Folks Grenadier squad there in the north. The Axes have very little stuff remaining. Two Raketenwerfers. Meanwhile, Bobitsky is up to four shocks. <laughs> Beavis has two left. He's he's really hurting for manpower. Teammates doing slightly better. Although, having just fielded a fresh KV-8 to replace the one he just lost, going to um, struggle to reinforce these squads. It's going to take some time. Shock troops are 32 to reinforce, which is not honestly that much. <laughs> Pretty cheap for what you're getting. Riflemen, by comparison, are 28. So are paratroopers, though. Run down. We are losing territory. The powers of be have granted us IS-2 heavy tanks. KV-8 flamethrower tanks are now available to burn the Germans back to Berlin. KV-8 clears a bunch of stuff here in the middle. STG over so dot and over extending towards the south into a machine gun are probably gonna get wiped too. There's K two KV-8s in the retreat path. That is almost certainly dead. Meanwhile, the Soviets are taking control of everything here in the north, and the Axis will continue to fail to take anything back under their control. Wellington well, never built a Pack 43, I think is what this game pretty much comes down to. If they had built a Pack 43, at least they would have had some kind of defensive line against those tanks. It would have probably gotten cleared at least a couple times by incendiary artillery, but... Incendiary artillery being dropped on the river to just push everything back into the base. The Soviets will continue to advance across the map and get it all under their control. 200, 220 fuel for Babitsky, Beavis up to 130 himself. He's, uh, he's a little behind his teammate because he's lost one KV-8, I think. Oh, that toss. Barrage woefully off target. There's a Stuka, there's double Stuka though, really? <laughs> double Stuka. No wonder they're struggling against tanks. Stalin's onion has just no units. He <laughs> just doesn't have anything left at all. Doesn't look like there's really any mechanism remaining by which the Axis could possibly make some sort of miracle comeback, except for a Stuka barrage sinking the entire Soviet army into the ice or something. Grenadiers back to full strength. Cooper, prepare for order. Prepare for combat. One's ready to fire, the other one halfway done cooling down. This Rakettenwerfer wall is the... <laughs> is apparently the intended defense. Attack. 
Ooh, that's friendly fire, though. <laughs> wow, that was pretty brutal. A lot of shock troops just died during that. I don't think it matters, though. I'm pretty sure this is over. Stupid Barrage going down on that KV-8 on the ice, though. It's struggling to actually get moving. <laughs> And it will sink. Now there's some sort of weird busy sound playing on repeat. Okay, it stops. The enemy has 75 points remaining. He will tear suited for command. Grenades being exchanged, incendiary artillery just boxing the axis right back into their base. Nothing that these team weapons can do to set up any time that that lands. Stukas have killed two KV-8s this game, which is more <laughs> more KV-8s than I've ever seen Stukas kill in one game before. One of them wasn't even on ice. One of them was actually just sitting in the <laughs> sitting in the central village. Kettenworth and Fox Grenadier Blob making its way into the middle to see what it can do. Here comes the first IS-2, though. There's two IS-2s on the field, in fact. The other one's just hitting the field now. If KV-8s were difficult to deal with, IS-2s are going to be uh, even more fun. Only 25 points remaining. Triple cap has been going this entire time, and clearly the Axis show no sign of being able to slow it down. All Raket and Warfers cleared. And this last desperate attempt for the center victory point will, will prove futile. To be fair, the, the Allies have, like, barely any infantry remaining, exhausting all of their manpower reserves on massive shock spam. But it just didn't matter that much, because at the end, the, the, uh, the Oberkmann West didn't have any hard anti-tank. KV-8s are just too good. KV-8s and incendiary artillery are too good at clearing out Raketenwerfers, and of course, walking them around in one big blob like this doesn't really help. Raketenwerfers, in this instance, just couldn't. Couldn't fill that role of hard anti tank, and I really think they needed a pack 43 or a command panther or something with a little bit more substance. Good game. Allies win.